Welcome to my channel. I'm Todor Arnold of Tosh, or Twenkit, a researcher and developer in artificial general intelligence. In this video, I will give tips on how to train your own GPT-2 medium with a custom dataset in your language or whatever data. The tips are based on my own experience and the obstacles that I had to overcome. There might be a second part about the creation and cleaning of the dataset and more interesting approaches for generation. GPT-2 is a transformer language model for generation of text from a prompt. Check other sources for more theoretical details. Let's continue with an introduction to Google Collaboratory. The training part of this project was developed there, on the cloud. I wanted to train on the most complex model which I could. It happened to be GPT-2 medium. A side note, you can generate locally on your CPU, I did, you can even run the bigger models on the CPU, but only for generation, if you just have uh, 24 or 32 gigabytes of RAM. You can also train on the CPU, but it will be slow. If you are new to Colab, it is a free interactive virtual Python environment where you can use a powerful GPU or even a TPU acceleration for machine learning and for education. Officially, you get up to 12 hours a day but that is optimistic. In my experience, it could start at just 2-3 hours and at best I've used about 6 or 7 hours. You could be ejected preemptively at any moment, so better exit before that. Also, you don't always get the same GPU. The best in my use case was a Tesla T4 with 15GB of RAM, which allowed me to train GPT-2 Medium on it, occupying 14GB. The model data is about 1.3 gigabytes. However, sometimes you will get a Tesla V100 with only 11 gigabytes or P4 with just 8 gigabytes. How to upload and download your data? There are two ways. First, manually each time. The data are disappearing after you end a session. And a more convenient and time-saving approach is to mount and access your attached Google Drive account. This tutorial is based on the work of Arshabi Kayao, Train GPT-2 in your own language. Check it out! However, the code had to be extended for this particular use case. It was for local training. She reports an RTX 2060 GPU. It is applied on a small model and small dataset with a fixed content at the beginning. While in this exercise, I used Colab with its peculiarities and I gradually expanded and updated the dataset while training. I was discovering how to improve it on the go. Colab challenges. One challenge that the collaboratory presents is that you can't just build a huge dataset and let it run for many hours. The server will eject you in one or two hours or several at best, in my experience. The system is checking for your presence and it prefers interactive usage. From time to time the environment will ask you, are you still there and are you a robot? So you have to split the dataset and training in smaller chunks. Note that the code is experimental, it is not cleaned and contains records of variants which were used and are still there in case they become needed. In my experiments, I tried to introduce a 16-bit folding point, but I didn't search hard enough. In theory, it could improve the speed and size twice. Tokenizer. If you are running the training for the first time, you have to set up a tokenizer. It is statistically analyzing the raw dataset, the text, and extracting a set of most frequent tokens, sequences of characters. Some of them are letters or other characters, some are words or parts of words. GPT-2 has up to 50,257 tokens. We don't deploy all slots. Five control tokens are added manually later. The tokens are just numbers in this dictionary. In order to see text, the transformer output should be decoded using that dictionary. Set the path to your corpus and save the tokenizer. When you save the model, you have to save your tokenizer as well. 
this is a way to check your CPU if you're curious. Know that the shell commands start with an exclamation mark. DU is disk usage. Medium is the best that can fit in Tesla T4, 345 million parameters. We introduce a parameter for the number of heads because empirically we will discover that the batch size should match the number of heads. You cannot set an arbitrary value for batch size. Here the dataset is split in segments. The numbers are discovered empirically. If they are too big, the training hits out of memory error. The block size could be slightly bigger, up to 160. Buffer size could also be bigger. The batch size, however, should be equal to the number of heads in the selected architecture. Smaller equals string tokenized. These are in order to reduce the length of the training dataset. The dataset is split in inputs and labels and shuffled by TensorFlow. Then we create an optimizer, the rate, etc. These parameters could vary, but the, the experiments might be more appropriate after some training. I've tried to use Pico, but it didn't work sometimes for some TensorFlow objects. And then we train. After the training iterations complete, you can test the actual quality of your language model by generating from prompts. The parameters control the creativity of the generation. You have to experiment and see how it feels. It depends on your taste and the dataset. Know that generation is slow. It may take several minutes for 200 tokens max length. Of course, you may generate shorter lengths, but it must be longer than your prompt. And in my opinion, it is more interesting to see how the GPT imagination is unfolding in longer stretches. When you save the model, you have to save your tokenizer as well. For the following training iterations, the procedure is a bit different. First, you load the model the weights, the big file, 1.3 gigabytes from your drive. You can upload it also from your computer, but it will be slower. In the meantime, you could have changed your corpus, the text, so you tokenize them again. Here I introduce tricks for sampling, for some kind of balancing, skipping some files, for example, odd even, or taking segments from the files, say, one 100,000 tokens from the beginning or ending of each file or filtering some files, uh, for example, adding only small files or uh, adding only files which are bigger than a given amount, adding some files more than once, etc. Random sampling. I had to do it even for my small data set of about uh, 140 megabytes when it was uh, the biggest. It is in uh, UTF-8 Cyrillic, slightly more than uh, 70 million letters or characters. This is a debugging output of the sampled files and where within the text segments are extracted. Then we prepare the data set, block size 160, Batch size equals number of heads, buffer size 3200. These parameters are selected empirically. Datasets keep known. This is an important point. Uh, that was a solution for a nasty problem. I think it happened uh, due to the extension of the dataset. Some of the inputs and labels in the TensorFlow dataset are known. Maybe due to unknown tokens because the initial tokenizer is trained on an initial version of the corpus, which then is updated and may contain characters which were missing in the basic corpus. If there is no filtering of these knowns, when fitting the model it just interrupts at some point, with a confusing exception when encountering these uh, broken dataset items. There were 15 known items, another optional division of the dataset, then slicing and shuffling, compiling and training. 
Optionally, there is another function, save model, and another way of calling the training process, which is embraced within a try except block in order to more safely catch interruptions like the mentioned above, or if we ourselves interrupt it. Memory leaks. Sometimes, when there are errors, the GPU memory is not properly released. It was a deep issue of Keras or TensorFlow, and sometimes the only solution is to restart the environment. This operation is preserving the files, but it is clearing the memory, so you have to run your cells again. An example of unzipping compressed texts, generate. And another generation cell with many experiments. You should better put it in a text file, or at least in an array, and select by an index. There is more to say on the preparation of the corpus, and I could share my experiments with more sophisticated generation, but maybe in another video. Good luck with your experiments, thumbs up and share if you like it, and see you next time. Bye.